2024. And guess what? We made it. We're still here by the grace of God. Give God some praise. Stand up with me and give God some praise this morning. It's a wonderful day. We are here to honor God and to thank him for a year gone by and looking forward to the year old. You know, we're writing a book and every day represents a page in the book. So we have an opportunity to write a book containing 365 pages. Oh, no, I just told a story. That's not true for this year. This year we get to write 366 pages of our book because this year is called leap year and that's when the astro astronomical calendar makes an adjustment so we have february 29th this year but this is the, day the lord has made it. glad in it give god the praise for this day Amen. And I'm reminded what it says over in Isaiah chapter 40. And this is God talking. And he says, to whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls them each by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, no one of them is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and complain, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded. Do not know, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power to the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on the wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. The word of God for the people of God. Lord, this is a beautiful day. We approach you with great humility and thanksgiving. We're humbled by your constant presence in our midst. Your love never ceases. And yet, Lord, your grace abounds everywhere. On this first Sunday in January 2024, the year of our Lord Jesus Christ, we gather here to celebrate our salvation in him. We're saved by the blood of Christ. We rejoice, O oh Lord, in the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now, we pray, on this beautiful day. We ask your blessing upon every woman, upon every man, every child, every family in our midst. And to God be the glory and the praise and the honor. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. How great thou art.
the tenets of our faith. They tell the world what we believe, and we tell ourselves the principles of our faith. Let us recite these words together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. God bless you. We have announcements today. Are there any announcements this morning? Madam <coughs> Clerk. Good morning and happy new year. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I wanted to hear you say that last week. And I missed seeing your faces, but I did watch you on Zoom. And I didn't watch it, I admit, until last night. Oh. It was a beautiful service in Kwanzaa. God bless you. <laughs> I wish I could find the perfect way to thank you for being so thoughtful. You always seem to know just what people need and what will brighten their day. Karen is such a part of who you are that I'm sure you're not even aware of some of the little kindest things you do and what a difference they make. I know your generous spirit has touched our life more than I can count. Thank you is probably something you hear all the time, but today, when I say those two words, just know I mean them more than you know. And this comes from the Henderson family. Yes, amen. How many of you always seen the color purple? Yes. I think most people have seen the color purple. <laughs> But if you have not, here's an opportunity that was given to me by Sister Price this morning. Out of the movies, Friday, January 26th, join us for a free screening of The Call of Purple. Doors open at 10 a.m., movie stars at 11. At Regal Cinemas at Piper Glen on Ray Road. RSVP by January 17th. So if you want to do that, I have the number here. Uh, I'm going to read it out. Of course, I don't have this with me. You can get it in front of you. Jan has it too. But call 704-493-4509. I wish you could have it on the board. On okay. television, they call the number pops up. So we don't have that. <laughs> so. There's some flowers out there, Jerry. There's flowers outside. outside. You know what that is. Oh, okay. That's sponsored by Okay, good. Yes, Cinema. Okay. So if you have not seen the color purple, this will be changed to the color purple for free. Thank you and have a good day and good service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, church family. Good morning. Good morning. This is to the man's house. We will be meeting next Saturday morning at 10 o'clock here at church. And it's a real important meeting because we start back our barbecue. <laughs> and it will be February the 16th and 17th. You should get tickets next week. We thought we would have them this week, but Rob is not here. So we're getting the tickets made. It's gonna be a, a good barbecue. We haven't had it since COVID. What, three years? So, I want everybody in the church to get these tickets, you know, everybody. <coughs> Looking forward. And the tickets are $15, you know. Yeah, but it's, that's the going rate now. It really is ain't cheap. A lot of people charge $18. But they are $15, and uh, we, we will have them next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Elder Price. <laughs> Bible study resumes on Tuesday at uh, 10, uh, 12 o'clock noon and at 7 o'clock in the evening. The Pan, uh, Herman, and Janora celebrate Bible study at 7 o'clock on Tuesday. And of course, I would like to request yet again 
that every member of the church participate in our Tuesday morning prayers and devotion. It's a wonderful time. I know that many of you are participating, but some of you are not. But I want to encourage you to do that. When you're doing that, the phone number is in the bulletin. We have it available to you. Call in, and it's easy to access, and you get a chance to hear from each other, and to hear the concerns of the members of the church. We have a wonderful prayer moment, so please call in, and I want to encourage you to do that. Are there any visitors with us this morning? If you are, please stand. I want to acknowledge your presence. Okay. You are all wonderful. Well, before you take your seat, want to get your name and touch your family with you? Yes. Are, are they visiting with you? <coughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Um, my children have been here before. Uh, this is me and my wife's first time. And I, well, with me it is together. And uh, our friend Michelle. Michelle, thank you. Time as well. And that's my mother-in-law. Your mother-in-law? Oh, I know your mother-in-law. Yeah, mother -in -law. Yeah, mother -in -law. Um, my name is Keith Sack. Yeah. Keith what? Sack. I said Keith. Sack. My name is Ed Marvin. Yes. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not mad at Okay. <laughs> Keith, welcome. And your wife's name is? Tamika. Tamika. God bless you, Tamika. Thank you. I've Keith? been here before, but yeah, uh, coming back. Now, I hear that. This is my daughter. This is, yes. <laughs> and this is the first Sunday of the rest of your life. Yes, sir. So, oh, we have 51 more Sundays to go in this year. Make sure you don't miss a one. <laughs> <laughs> 51 Sundays. Well, you know, welcome, Keith. Thank you. Tamika, God bless you. Thank, Thank you, Mother, for bringing your family out today. Michelle, God bless you. And to all the others, Chris, Lizzie. Let us pass the Lord's peace one to the other, and the Lord's peace be with you.
there's never a time when we are not in need of prayer. 2023 was a rough year for some of us. Yes, yes. We had some losses. Yes. We had some trials and tribulations. <laughs> but we are here. Amen. 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 Can we give God all the praise? Amen. Amen. The devil tried to stop our praise. Amen. He tried to stop our acknowledgement that Jesus Christ died for us on the cross. He tried to remove our awareness of how much we are loved by God. But he failed. Yes. In spite of all the tragedies of the world, and the hardships and the heartache and the pain, the wars, the bombings, the senseless killing, the drive-by shootings, the inane responses that we've had one for the other, the disciples of Christ still remain faithful. Yes. And we still lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. Are there other prayer concerns this morning? Call out the names, Carol. Uh, I, I honestly want African American used to be taught everywhere. African American history to be taught everywhere. Thank you for that. That's a, that's important. Thank you so much, Carol. Yes, Lucia. Latoya Dickens and Ebony White. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Latoya Dickens and Ebony White. Thank you. Let's pray for the uh, brother that John. Brother Dinkin, he had definitely found his family. He's down there. John Dinkin? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, good for him, brother. John, a couple weeks ago. Oh, yes, I remember him. We were doing our classes together. Yeah, but, yeah. Thank you for that. George Jackson. George Jackson, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Aretha Blackwell. Aretha Blackwell. Yes. Is she here alone? My mom. Yes. It was Anne's mother. Sure. His mother, Lowe, yes. Shirley Manuel family sure. was funeralized on December 30th. Oh, yeah. Shirley Manuel. Yes, I spoke to her the other day. Her sister was funeralized in recent days. Thank you very much. And let's pray for the Felpers, uh, Mac Felder family that used to stay in Griff Town for a Griff family. He found his brother did a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Arthur, Sharon, and Jerry Beckett, yes. This week, Yvette and I, we drove down to uh, Georgia, Covington, Georgia, which is near Atlanta. For our brother, as we told you, uh, two months ago, suffered a stroke. And he's paralyzed on the left side, uh, arm and leg. And he's in the facility now, uh, trying to recover. And so we also went over to see your brother, Jerry, who was in the fourth stage of Alzheimer's. So we paid for him and his wife. And uh, we drove back on Thursday evening to be with uh, Patricia, the Hood family, as we celebrated the funeral service for Leroy Hood Jr. Uh, over the Grace Memorial President uh, Baptist Church. I officiated that service on Friday, so we prayed for them. Yeah. We didn't want to miss that, so we came back for the Hood family on Friday. Reginald. The McVeigh family. McVeigh family. Thank you so much. Andre Dixon. Andre Dixon. The family of Ruby Graham and Valerie Thank you, thank you. All right. Now. The mass shooting in Iowa, yes. Uh, you had another mass shooting. Yeah, yeah. Everybody. This country, I don't know. We have so many of them. The Griff family. So what is that? The Griff family. The Griff. The Griff family, yes, thank you. For those of you who are at home and uh, who don't know, this brother who just said the Griff family, he's uh, he's hit a is a member of the church, trustee of the church. And he, like so many of us, ha he has a nickname. <laughs> and so when I first came to Girl Heights almost five years ago now, I was introduced to this guy named Sneaky Pete. <laughs> and my, my hands went to my pockets. <laughs> Immediately, thinking, what do I have to, how did he get that nickname? <laughs> but uh, his name is Charles Massey. But he has a, a, a term of endearment, I might add. 
And we call him Sneaky Pete. He's not sneaky, by the way. He's a lovely brother. He's a lovely brother in Christ. But when I first heard it, I got to tell you, Sneaky, I looked, put my, my wallet, you know. But he's a good man, and we love him. Thank you, sir. We all change in the Lord. We all Thank you, man. Thank you. I've had the prayer concerns today. The upper of our government, yes, that is so dysfunctional right now. So dysfunctional. And you know who suffers? All of us. All of us suffer because of that. Sherry Jefferson family. Sherry Jefferson family. Amen. Octavia Pope. Octavia Pope, my good. D. Tompkins. Amen. Let's pray for them. Always, always. Catherine Thomas. Catherine Thomas, thank you. Thank you. Very Let's pray for the church. Yeah, yeah. Let's pray for Vera Heights. Every everybody in the church. Every woman, every man, every child, every all the marriages in the church. Let's pray for our ministry in the church and we grow and expand. May 2024 be a blessed year for your Heights. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our youth in the church. Yeah. Let's pray for our choir. Thank God for Michael. Thank you, sir, for being with us this morning. And we just pray for where we're going as a congregation. Amen? Amen. Let, us, let us never stop doing that. God bless you. Oh, uh, the other prayer concerns. Uh, yeah. uh, the, the family of my friend, Victoria Jeff, that's on Thank you, sir. The family of friend Victoria. It is well with my soul.
Sometimes we cannot even get up. We make mistakes along life's journey when we fail to acknowledge your teachings and follow them as you have prescribed. We fall into a state of confusion when we disregard the wonderful wisdom you've provided us. Then on this day, January the 7th, we are reminded how beautiful your wisdom is. If we would just follow as you've urged us to do. Life is not difficult, we acknowledge. If we just get out of the way. If we can set aside our own pride and our own agenda. If we can let our egos take a vacation and humble ourselves before your precepts, oh, yes. your teachings. It's not that difficult to love one another. Oh, yeah. We don't have to lie and cheat and be mean towards each other. We don't have to hate each other. We don't have to injure one another. If we just follow as you have taught us, this world and this country and this church and our communities to be far, far better off. So today we pray as we give you praise. We thank you for all the names that were called out a moment ago. All the names and circumstances. Amen. We have for mercy and for healing and for grace. Teach us, we ask. Amen. And as you teach us and as you lead us, do we have the wisdom to follow yes. as you lead us? Now, Lord, bless the word that's going to go forward today. Bless it to the hearing of those who are here. And may our faith be strengthened because of what we learn from your word this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I forgot to mention, I learned this late, late last night that Phil and um, Kim Malone contracted COVID, so let's pray for them Amen. as well. Yes. Yes.
shout amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The topic this morning is gifts that cannot be exchanged. Gifts that cannot be exchanged, my. There's a verse I want you to commit to memory. It's a simple verse. But I believe on this verse hinges or hangs much of the theology of the New Testament. I'm going to first give you the verse, and then I'm going to give you the context of the verse. Is that all right? Yeah. Here's the verse. It's one that you've heard, I trust, at least once in your life, hopefully multiple times. But this is the verse. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Hallelujah. Say it with me. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's the verse. And if you can get everything else you ever learn about our faith, think about that verse. Because that's the one. Jesus died on the cross for what our sins. But here's the context. Let's go back to uh, Romans chapter 6. And let's begin uh, over there in the 15th verse. Let's put this verse in the context. I don't like taking verses out of context, but let's put it in the context. Romans chapter 6, beginning in verse 15. What shall we say? Shall we, shall, shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone to obey him as slaves, you are slaves to the one whom you obey. Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to resurrection. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you wholeheartedly obey obeyed the form of teaching to which you were entrusted. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. Oh, that's the key. I put this in human terms because you were weak in your natural selves, just as you used to offer the parts of your body in slavery to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness. So now offer them in slavery to righteousness, ah, leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Hmm. Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is everlasting life. Amen. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift, ah, oh, that's it. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Yes, yes. Our Lord. Amen. 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 The word of God for the people of God. God. Jesus is Lord. Yes. I, I have been pondering this week about this whole notion about this gift here found in uh, Romans chapter 6 verse 23, the gift of God. And uh, I was sharing with the event why we give why do we give gifts? And there are a lot of there, there are a lot of reasons why we give gifts. Uh, we give gifts because we want to show some compassion for somebody, right? We, we give a gift because we want to respond to a need that they have, and you're able to to respond to that need in a way. So you help them out. That's a gift. Uh, and you, you, of course, you sometimes you give a gift to bribe somebody. <laughs> Come on now. It's, it's designed to manipulate. So you give a gift. 
and hopefully, hopefully down the road you get some, some better consideration. Uh, you want something from them down the road. They don't know that. They'll find out later. But it's a bribe. You know it's a bribe. You're trying to shape their feelings towards you and to what you want to come in their lives. But the best context in which to give a gift is to give it in the context of love. You give it because you want to give it. Yeah. You're not expecting anything in return because you just want to give it. You want the person who is who is the recipient of the gift to benefit from it. You want them to be happy because of the gift that you gave them. You want them to smile because of the gift you made available to them. A gift is a wonderful thing. I think about how life would be less rich if we didn't have gifts coming to us. And gifts come to us I've never seen a gift recorded anywhere in history where uh, a gift came from an enemy. Unless, you know, the Trojan horse. But gifts, when you receive it, you know, it's from somebody who knows you or knows something about you. And you can trust the gift. It's not going to hurt you. Amen? Amen. You, you get a gift because you are appreciative of the person who gave it to you. So that's why we give gifts. But today I want to talk about this gift giving in the context of a broader notion of gift giving. We're at the post-Christmas season, and some of us have received gifts. Uh, you always happen to get the gift, but some of the gifts we got were not very utilitarian. Some of the gifts we got, you know that you couldn't use and you would never use it. But you, you are grateful for the spirit that gave you the gift. They said, not the gift for the giver. I get it. <laughs> but sometimes we get a gift that just has no practical use for us. <laughs> you know, it just, well, it's a nice gift. I have, when I was younger, I used to get socks for gifts. <laughs> now, they may not mean much to you, but when you poll, you appreciate it. Right. 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 Um, I used to get my mother for, for all of her life, Thanks. all of her life. I knew. I knew exactly what I was going to get for Christmas and my birthday. I got the same gift every year. I got a white shirt. Every Christmas and every birthday for all my life, I got a white shirt. And I said to Mother one day, not any color shirts. <laughs> Other colors at the store, oh boy, you gotta have a white shirt. You gotta have a white shirt. Okay, I did. So when we got married, my wife and I, we got the gift of a beautiful chandelier. Mm -hmm. Now, who gives anybody a chandelier? <laughs> <laughs> but yet, we got a gift of I mean, this huge chandelier. And of course, we, put, we couldn't use it, but we appreciate the <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Cut that laugh down. I make you nervous. <laughs> but gifts should be something you could use and you could appreciate. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen? So, gifts are important because they make our lives more enriched. But I want to talk today uh, about that because some gifts you get at Christmas time, you don't like them, so you take it back to the store and you say to the store clerk, you say, I, I want to exchange my gift for something that I want, or at least that I would like. And some stores have a gift exchange policy, many stores don't, but some stores do and they allow you to go back and you can exchange the gift for something of, of similar value maybe a different color, different size, fit, fit your body better, whatever, and they have the exchange policy. Some stores don't, don't allow you to exchange gifts. Once you have it, guess what? It's yours. <laughs> and you give it to somebody else if you want, you can re-gift it, but we don't take it back now. And, and so that's one of the ways to think about gifts. But today we'll talk about the gift, we'll talk about several kinds of gifts. The first kind of gift I want to talk about this morning is a gift of life. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The gift of life itself. No one has, none, none of us uh, have the responsibility, uh, no, no one of us have responsibility for our coming into the world. None of us have that responsibility. Yet, few among us would choose not to have been given the gift of life. No matter how uh, it came, you're here. Right. Uh, whether you're born to a rich family or a poor family, you are here. Whether you're born to a uh, family of means or, in some cases, family had meager means, you're here. Mm -hmm. You can't pick your heritage, whatever heritage you 
were born into, that's what you inherited. Mm -hmm. By birth, you can't pick your race, and you certainly can't pick your parents. Uh, that is an ordination that's given to us by God alone. None of us have that ability. Ah, except for my hats, I've got to be careful here. I'm, when I was going back and looking at Psalm 139, and I was playing in my own mind a game with myself regarding my pre-birth. He said, what in the world is a pre-birth? A pre-birth is a status of existence that God and you had before you were born. So wait a minute. A status of existence before I was born? Yes! Amen. God knew you before you took your first breath. Yes! Amen. God knew your gender. Yes! He knew your makeup. He knew your race. Mm -hmm. He knew the parents who would bring you into the... He knew everything about you. So you see, I had an existence before my mother gave me birth and before she named me Reggie, mm -hmm. you see. I know I wear the name Reggie because she gave it to me, but in fact, I had another name before she gave it to me. And I had an existence before I was born, just as you had an existence before you were born. According to Psalm 139, before you were born, God knew everything about you. And every word before you spoke them, every action before you took them, every thought before you had them, and God had recorded every day before you took even one of them. God saw you being woven together in, in your mother's womb. The scripture says, in that secret place. Yes. Mm -hmm. The only God and your mother knew about. Amen. So you see, God gave us life. And he gave us the ability, you see, to have all these things. And among us, there are certain people who were born who had great abilities. Some of us had, were born to unlock the secrets of good diseases. Mm -hmm. I'm so proud of humanity in this regard that we have uh, science and scientific developments, developments where we have literally found ways to cure or to help cure uh, certain diseases. Somebody was born to know that. Uh, many of our inventions came because somebody was born, came into the world with the preordained knowledge of how they would put the dots together to discover certain physical aspects of the universe, such as electricity, such as the semiconductor and the computer. Some of us discovered, may discover the hidden road that to everlasting peace. Some of us will find eventually a way to have uh, to solve hunger in the world. That person is alive or is about to become born and they can become an asset to God's kingdom. Mm. But there's some of us, you see, who are born with other kinds of characteristics. Listen, please. They may not have had the opportunity to do the things that others of us have. Some of us are born into poverty. And by the way, just, just as a reminder, poverty by its very definition puts a limitation on opportunities. Mm. Yes. Mm. Mm. But poverty does not stop you from exploring your God-given talents. Amen. Don't let that be a reason for you not succeeding. And then yes, some of us have physical and developmental developmental disabilities. Yeah. But even in their developmental disabilities, whether physical or mental, they are a tremendous contribution to God's kingdom. Yes. Yeah. Irrespective of what they can do or not. You yeah. see. Some years ago I had the pleasure of a meeting a gentleman was born without legs. And uh, and I was in his company had been in, in fact he founded a center in Long Island. Uh, and, and he was able to bring in other individuals who came in the world without legs, without arms in some cases. And he was critical. We had to there on Long Island. One day we had lunch, and I was talking to him. It was Biscardi. Him, him and Biscardi was his name, Biscardi. And, and, and he said, I, I used to question my mother when I was born without legs. Mother, why was I, why was I born without legs? And his mother gave him an answer that perhaps only a mother would ever give. Mm -hmm. And the mother said to him and this party, called him Hank, with no disrespect, because God sent you into the world because he knew I needed someone to love. Mm -hmm. And then Amen. she said to this man something mm -hmm. that I never forget. He said, you are a leaf on the rose bush. 
Mm-hmm. Now he didn't understand that analogy at first, a leaf on the rose bush, because when you go to a rose bush, you look at the what? Rose. The roses. That's right. But what makes the rose look beautiful? The leaves. The leaves. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. The leaves make yeah. the rose look beautiful. Yeah. And here did Miss Hardy, born without legs, she learned to got some prosthetic limbs later on, and he walked with the with create crutches, one of each arm. But he got around all of the to get a PhD. Mm-hmm. And he found it the Viscardi Institute. Remember that in Albertson, Long Island? A wonderful place. And to this day, hundreds, maybe thousands of individuals come to that through that facility who were born without legs, without arms, or without legs. That was his gift. But he had the gift of life. And I said to him while we were having lunch one day, I said to him, have you ever regretted your life? And I expected what I heard. He said, no, Reggie, I, I've never regretted being born. I was born without limbs, but I loved every day of my existence. Yes. Mm. Amen. He said, see, if you have, life comes to us and we have to accept it as it is. Yes. We can't choose how it comes to us. But our job is to make is, is to make the most of the gift of life that God has given us. That's our first and primary responsibility. Doesn't matter whether you're handicapped, doesn't matter whether you're a woman, or that you're black, mm-hmm. or that you're poor. Mm-hmm. Your responsibility is to make the most out of the gift of the life that God has given you. Now, I said that because I must tell you, I get very frustrated. But I hear people fall back on excuse making. Yes. And they allow themselves to fall into the pattern of failure. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm failing because I'm a woman. Oh. Or because I'm handicapped. Because I have no money. Mm-hmm. Because I'm black. That's why I'm a failure. Mm. How big a lie are you going to tell yourself and allow yourself to believe the lie? No more. You are here, and God has given you a certain gift that you are supposed to enjoy. Yeah. Number two, yeah. he's given us the gift of the world. Yeah. The world, that's right, in which we live. You know, many of us may have chosen to live in a different time in life, uh, maybe a hundred years earlier, maybe we must imagine us living a thousand years into the future. But the world you have now, guess what? This is it. This is our season. Amen. You, you can't go back in time. My favorite time, if I were to go back in time, I have a pension for the 1930s, 1940s. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about before computers. But I look at, you know, I like to watch the uh, movies every now and then, the, the time, the, the, the period pieces. I love yeah. when they show America, especially in the inner city areas of the 1920s, 30s, and 40s. For some reason, that appeals to me. Don't ask me why. <laughs> because they had, they had it very hard in those days. But I can imagine living back in those days. Can you imagine being born in the turn of the, the 1900s, the, the, after the, the wide use of, inter, of indoor plumbing? There was a time when you didn't have indoor plumbing. Right. Uh, right. Some of you might have remember that even to this day. But there was a time when you didn't, you couldn't go to the bathroom inside the house. You had to go outside the house. You go down a little bit of a path, and there's a bit of a shed, and you go in there and make yourself at home for a few moments. But then the advent of you know interior plumbing came along. And what a, what what a comfort that made to living in a Yes. Yeah. I I can go to my faucet right now and, and turn it and get fresh portable water. There was yes. a time you couldn't do that. You had to go out through a well and you had to pump the well and fill the bucket and bring it into the house. That was a time. But see, God has given us this world, and this is our time. For instance, and this is our time. This is not a hundred years ago. It's not going to be a thousand years from now. It mm-hmm. is it? It's two thousand twenty-four, yes. and God yes. means for us to use what we have to do this time in the world. Mm -hmm. This is all the time we have. Mm -hmm. We must seek to be part of the solution rather than part of the continuation of the problem, but do so now. Mm -hmm. And that's why, boys and girls, my sons and daughters, this is why your parents and your teachers are forever on your case to make the best of the time you have in school. 
Learn as much as you can. But don't learn it for the sake of learning. Learning is at, no, learn it at a high level. Amen. Don't seek to get a C or an 80. Right. None of this sounds, I got an 80 in English. Well, that's, I'm glad you got an English. But I'm not happy about it. Right. You could have got a 90. Yeah. You could have got a 95. But you got to apply yourself to get the 90 or the 90 or the 100. Okay. Don't seek to miss the 80 or yeah. the 75. That may sound like I'm passing. But don't you know across town there's another boy and girl, mm. maybe of a different color, mm. who got a 95 or a 100? Mm. And I must tell you, as, as a parent, I'm very impatient when it comes to my children and learning stuff. So I want my children to be the boss. I want my children to be the supervisor. I want my child to be an entrepreneur because they have the skill sets and the mind to do it. But you won't do it if you don't apply yourself to get 100%. To see excellence in this time. Now listen, if you're 14 years old, let me tell you something. One day you'll be 15, mm -hmm. God willing, and that means you'll never be 14 again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what that means. So if you take advantage of when you're 14 or when you're 20 or when you're 25, you have to think sensitively about I may not always be 15 or 25. At a certain point, but the clock ticks. Yes. 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 yes, it does. Forward. Amen. It never ticks backward. Amen. We have to take advantage of the time that gives you rent now. So we have the gift of the world. But now listen, then there's another gift that God has given us, the gift of the land in which we're living. I must confess, as you do, I'm sure, America is the wealthiest and most privileged nation on the planet Earth. And I've traveled literally all, the world, all around the world. I've been to 56 countries in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. 56. Amen. And I've been to the poor countries in Asia and Africa. I've been to many countries in Europe. Uh, and I tell you, America is a wonderful place. Mm -hmm. In spite of our disparities, in spite of all the racial uh, 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 disproportionate uh, privileges and all of that, America is the wealthiest, most privileged place on the planet. Even the poorest among us is better off than millions of others living in the world. Even the poorest among yeah. us. Amen. You don't realize that until you travel elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Because there are those who don't have clothes to wear, even shoes to wear. Mm -hmm. And they, walk, they go their whole lives. Listen! There are parts of the world where people are born and they die at an old age and they never wear a pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. You say, I can't be. Well, yes, it can be. Mm -hmm. Every day you wake up hungry, you go out the whole day hungry, and you go to bed hungry. Mm -hmm. Every single day. This is, but see, God gave us this gift, the gift of the land in which we are living. Yes. I didn't ask to become a member of the, uh, of the American citizenry, but here you and I are. We're born American citizens mm -hmm. in the wealthiest land of the world, most privileged land. Of, but this is a gift, you see. But ah, then we come down to this verse here in Romans chapter. 6, verse 23. And this is the one that I want us to just talk about a little bit more. Because the, the gift about which Paul wrote about in Romans 6, 23, it, it's a gift that cannot be exchanged. It, is simply, it simply must be accepted as it comes to us on God's terms and in God's way. You can't shape this gift. You can't accept Jesus any other way than the way he came. You can't modify him. You can't somehow redefine his purpose. You, that's not your right or your ability. You can say, well, I wish Jesus would do something. Mm -hmm. I wish he would do something. Why would he have to put all these responsibilities on my shoulder? Malcolm Muggeridge, Malcolm Muggeridge, a great theologian, said, when you accept Jesus Christ as your gift, you begin to see life in new ways. And you see the world in new ways with a new heart. When we accept this new gift, this new gift, uh, we, we can put everything else in perspective. We're able to live as God intended for us, and we should live. What better way to begin this new year, 2024, than to accept this gift of life? I was humbled this week. I was stuck. I was stuck on the first part of Romans 6, 23. I, will, I literally sat at my desk and I said, wait a minute, Lord, what are you saying to me? The first part of Romans 6, 23 talks about the wages. 
No, when I think of wages, I think of some money. Well, That's what I think of. I mean, something you earn. Yeah. <laughs> wages. Wages, something an employer gives an employee for having worked to earn it. But I saw that verse, Romans 6, 23. The first part of that verse talks about a certain wage that is harmful. It says the wages of sin. I stopped dead at my desk and I fell back in my chair and I said, oh, Lord, what, what have I done to myself? I messed up. I'm not talking about the world. I'm not talking, I'm talking about Reggie Tuggle. I've messed up. In my lifetime, there have been moments when I've done things that are antithetical to what God wanted me to do and do. Oh, yeah. I committed sin. I violated the very tenets of my faith. The wages of my sin. Is that mm -hmm. death? That's what I brought on myself. Death. Mm -hmm. That's what my sins have meant to me. Death. I'm gonna die. No longer exist. Death. But my eyes kept reading. Mm -hmm. They came across this word, but. <laughs> But the gift of God is eternal life. The gift of God. Now, I'll go back to John chapter 10, verse 10. Jesus himself said, I came to give you life that you might have it more abundantly. Amen. What is it about this gift? Once God gives the gift, he doesn't take it back. No. Ah, that's what I love about my Lord and my Savior Amen. Jesus Christ. He doesn't take it back. He may not respond to the gift in the way God hopes or wants, mm -hmm. but he doesn't take it back. Amen. We may be disobedient, but he doesn't take it back. We may wantonly disapprove and disregard his love, but he doesn't take it back. Mm -hmm. We may refuse to follow his teachings, but he doesn't take it back. Amen. We may continue to give in to, to hatred and to violence, but he doesn't take the gift back. Mm. We may be unwilling to serve in his kingdom, but he doesn't take the gift back. We may refuse to give God praise, but he doesn't take the gift back. It's eternal. It's a gift. No strings. Unconditional gift. Hallelujah. God wants us to live. And why doesn't he take the gift back? It's because he wants us to live eternally. Amen. How can we refuse the gift? Amen. You have to be, forgive me for saying so, but it's in scripture. You have to be a fool mm. to reject this gift mm. and accept the wages yes. of sin. Mm. I ain't going to hell. Mm. Right. I ain't going. I don't want you to go. God doesn't want you to go. Mm. But the way you avoid going there, is to accept the gift. Amen. Accept the gift. Oh, yeah. And when you do that, every day will be sweeter. The smile on your face will be more genuine. You have in your heart joy all the time. Amen. When you accept the gift, then nothing can stop you or defeat you Amen. because you know who you are. Amen. You can say, I am a child of God.
my, 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 look at this family here. Look at this family. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the scripture says, when, when one person comes to the Lord, heaven rejoices. Angel rejoice. And so to them, and ask his father to define, talk about himself for just a moment, and then introduce his children. Keith. Oh. Uh, Again, I'm Keith Sapp, uh, from New York originally, uh, 45. Uh, I'm the proud father of Kyra and Cassidy. <laughs> Kyra's 11, Cassidy just turned 8. Um, he really uh, spoke to me when he said, uh, pretty much, I want our children to be, to be great. Amen. Amen. I looked at her like you heard what you said. <laughs> I told my wife the other day, I said, uh, I just woke up and I said, you know, we need to go to church. Amen. 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 Like, you know, as me being the, the head of the household, taking this step. Wait, 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 repeat that again, you know what? Would you repeat that? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's important. <laughs> That's his, that's his rule. Go back to Ephesians chapter 5. This is right there in Ephesians 5. You take the lead. You take the spiritual lead. Yeah, right. Continue. I'm going to do that. <laughs> so, um, I just, like I said, we being at the head of the household, I felt like it's been such a long time that, uh, since I've been to church and with all that's going on, I felt like, you know, it was, it was a way for me to protect my home. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you, Keith. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's have a word of prayer. Yes. Holy Church. Elders, been gathered around elders. Come on, just lay hands on this family. Elders, you're here. Amen. Good. Mother, I see you sitting over there. Mother. See our, our shortcomings and our failures. Amen? Amen. Amen. And that's whatever you identify as a shortcoming or failing or sin, you know that this is why this table is so important. <clears throat> Father in heaven, as we come now to share in this holy meal, 
the Lord's Last Supper, the Holy Eucharist. We come humbly before this place to this meal that he prepared for us. He told us to come just as we are, without pretense or fanfare. And we're grateful for this moment. And in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior, we ask that you bless this bread representing your body and this juice from the fruit of the vine representing your blood. We ask you to bless in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus Christ took the bread and he broke it and gave thanks and gave it to the disciples. Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. As often as you partake of it, do so in remembrance of me. Following that, he took the cup filled with the juice from the fruit of the vine, and he blessed it and gave thanks. He said, Take, drink. This is the blood of the new covenant. As often as you partake of this, do so in remembrance of me. The body of Christ given for the remission of our sins. Let us commune together. Yeah. 
wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. May 2024 be a blessed year for you. Have a happy, healthy, prosperous, safe, and blessed new year. May the grace of God surround you and protect you from all harm every day of this year. Write good things in your book of 366 pages. At the end of the year, may be a wonderful year of memories and not a year of regrets. To God be the glory and the praise. Amen. Amen.